Hi guys, welcome back to Thursday Top Lessons. Hope you've liked the video so far. Please do subscribe to our channel. Today we're going to talk about the perfect balance between short term and long term. Winning now, winning later. Written by David M. Cole, who became the CEO of Honeywell in 2012, is a masterpiece on leadership and foresight in planning. It focuses on the importance of balance between planning and execution. So, what exactly is the problem statement that you know leaders face? He says that a McKinsey study found that firms that followed long-term strategies amassed dollar seven billion more in market cap between 2001 and 2014. They generated 47 percent more revenue growth. And 36% more earning on average than companies that focused on the short term. Nevertheless, when it came to allocating scarce resources, short termism overpowered long termism. A lot of leaders feel that short term must be sacrificed for the long term, like they are mutually exclusive. But you must pursue both at the same time to reach your max potential. That is what he advocates. He talks about three principles of short-term and long-term performance. First, scrub accounting and business practices down to what's real. Second, invest in the future but not excessively. And third, grow while you keep your fixed cost constant. Let us now understand his take on leadership. He says that leadership was at its core an intellectual activity. Any ninny could improve a given metric that didn't take much of a thought or creativity. The best leaders acknowledge the tensions that pop up all the time around the organization, and they get better results by probing deeper to resolve them. His leadership framework includes that leaders must know how to mobilize large groups of people. They must pick the right direction towards which their team and organization should move. And they must get the entire team or organization moving in that direction to execute the designated goal. A very similar uh, thought process on uh, leadership was shared by Stephen Covey in his book Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Do check out that video as well. He also says that the idea that as a leader you can focus on strategy and delegate its implementation to great people is a fallacy. Another interesting insight that he shares is that the craving for fiscal shortcuts is rather like alcoholism. When you stop, you need to do it cold turkey and permanently. If you take another drink, even years later, you risk relapsing. As a leader, adopt a posture of constant vigilance. Perpetual restructuring and responsible planning are a daily routine. Strategy, he says, such as it was. Had no relevance. Operational considerations and making the quarter became daily concern, with strategy fading into the background. Most companies face this problem of long-term strategy slides filled with gyan and you know no follow-up or details on how to run on that path. His take on implementation of the strategy or the long-term plan is that you roll out an initiative thoughtfully. Do it slowly enough to ensure that it sticks, but fast enough to build momentum and get as much benefit as possible. SKU rationalization is a very important uh, topic for many companies. He has an interesting take on that. He says that if you have a thousand hundred performing or low profit SKUs, double the price on each of them. Customers will stop buying nine hundred of them, and the remaining hundred. You will realize they hold value to the customers, and you are underpricing them. It'll have a very little impact on your bottom line. Here's his take on meetings. He says that I recommend ending every meeting by establishing the who, what, and when of any follow-up action. Be clear what the follow-up action is, and when it comes to who. Never accept the team as an answer. On when, remember Parkinson's law that work expands to fill the time allotted. Don't be afraid to create tight timelines. Sometimes organizations get used to telling time with calendars instead of watches, and it has to stop. 
in public you have to convey confidence in the moves that you've made because teams and organizations don't handle uncertainty very well but that doesn't mean you can't question your decisions in private always ask yourself what if my hypothesis assumptions belief or decisions are wrong if you are right you will even get more confident if you are wrong you will get the right prod in to push you in a new direction that is how you must go prepared in your meetings also very importantly he says that in meetings it is important to be right at the end of a meeting not in the beginning enable the right amount and quality of thinking control your ego do not speak first now let us understand his take on organization and people planning he says that in general when you have a problem to address it pays to over resource the solution up front since it always costs less to resolve problems earlier than later even if the short term cost seems high at the time he says that companies focused on process improvement realize other efficiencies too over time you do wind up hiring more people because you become more competitive and grow sales not because you are working inefficiently process improvement with rightly calibrated investments this helps with short term shareholder returns as well as ever increasing ability to invest in the future he lays down four steps to create a better functional organization you know in it finance hr legal etc first create a financial goal for each function second demand that function hold flat cost no inflation adjustment or even cut cost as the organization grows while improving service third have the functions develop annual strategic plans that accomplish the both uh, the first two points fourth establish service metrics and goals then use surveys to confirm that service is getting better over time he has a very interesting take on change management as well he says that sometimes the best course to change management is to change management get people past the mindset of i have to do my job and this too and if they don't change apply the rules he also says that revolutionary change sounds good but it's not the most optimal route to strong short term and long term performance revolution can move in unintended directions process improvement is less dramatic and glamorous than that but over a sustained period it counts This is also relevant as even market dynamics change slightly over a sustained period of time and not you know they're suddenly disrupted overnight. He says that Darwin's theory of survival of the fittest should be changed to survival of the most flexible. If you want to perform well over both short term and long term, pay close attention to executive leadership in general. as much as you invest in areas like culture process transformation and mergers and acquisitions you would only make progress if you have senior leaders who are both committed to the company strategy and are capable enough of executing them having the right number of those leaders matters too do not increase fixed costs by being top heavy on giving second chances he says that don't be the pattern saint of poor performance give people the second chance to improve but if they don't you need to take the hard calls great succession planning also helps you with backups to take these hard calls faster also it's far better to leave a job open for a few months and to get the very best person and deal with the disruption it causes than to settle just for mediocrity this is uh, not completely in line with the blitz scaling philosophy of higher miss right now rather than miss right but you know as organizations gain scale perhaps uh, i can see why this is a better strategy to go for he also says that in my experience experience is overrated just a little bit of experience combined with a lot of raw talent is worth far more also as a leader people must hear the truth about how business is doing from you If you present an overly rosy picture at the outset, you might have to go back and explain the situation yet again when sales have dried up further. At the same time, don't pretend you know how bad the recession will get because you don't. 
any predictions you make will come back and haunt you so to close let's uh, discuss the three part legacy that he wished to have left the company with first he says that i wanted everyone associated with honeywell during my tenure which is investors customers employees suppliers to make a lot of money second create a deep bench of an all star leadership talent leaders who were constantly being recruited for other jobs but who stayed at honeywell because they loved their job and felt proud about the company and the third i wanted to feel good about holding my honeywell shares for 10 years or more because the company was thriving without me